G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here with a Sunfoil update. First order of business, we have a fairly urgent safety warning update. If you're fitting a Sunfoil, you must fit a fuse. And this fuse between the battery and the charge controller. Now the purpose of having this fuse is so that if anything happens to the wire between the battery and the charge controller, you're not going to cook the wiring. Because if you cook the wiring, it heats up. And if it heats up, all the magic smoke comes out of the wire and it'll never work again. And let's face it, there are points of potential vulnerability where the wire could become damaged. Now I mention all this because a movie's been put up by Dave in Canberra who's got a 20 watt panel on the roof of his Ford Explorer and exactly the same charge controller as we've got here and what happened to him was he lent his car to his kids the wires from the battery became disconnected at the terminal posts which as you can see I've got mine all strapped up with electrician's tape but uh, Dave's came adrift and happily for him it was while he was driving that the wires cross-connected and let all the magic smoke out. Dave has his charge controller mounted up on the side of the car above the seat belt and presumably even if somebody was doing aerobatics in the back seat kicking footprints in the headlining where I've got mine they couldn't disconnect the wires but because Dave had his charge controller in a place where it could be disturbed and he just never quite got around to fitting the fuse and without that little fuse when his wires cross connected he got a dead short circuit as I said lucky he was driving the car at the time otherwise it would have burnt to the ground you could pretty much say that I've put enough work and time and effort into designing this setup that there's no part of it that you can really let go of you got to do it as instructed put the fuse in Okay, so much for the stern warnings. Now for the good news. The Mark III here has just had a little bit of a change of pace after oh, 11 years of pretty much running on empty tank top-ups. In honour of the ancient Mayans who may or may not have predicted the end of the world, I decided to fill the tank to the full. I put 48.17 litres in and I drove 484 kilometres and filled it up again 45.95 litres 10.552774 kilometres to the litre and uh, it took from the 14th of December to the 4th of January to burn that uh, 45.95 litres so when you consider that I've been cruising at 105 kilometres an hour on the open road you'd have to say that the solar thermal ramjet is earning its keep and that's the good news for the all sing and all dancing mark 3 over here on the mark 5 30 watt panel on the turbocharged intercooled diesel Holden Rodeo the 100 mile an hour tape is holding up well there has been a little bit of damage from hail nothing worth even seriously bothering about and uh, we've proved a couple of things one is that you need to have the biggest panel you can fit on a diesel 30 watts is not enough and the other is uh, how slowly a battery responds to being fed supplementary electricity from a solar panel and how fast it responds from losing the solar panel have a look at this here we have a year's fuel burn on this vehicle started off up around nine and a half the very first tank when it had probably been on a trickle charger at the dealers came down to a bit above eight and pretty much fluctuated but effectively apart from this big anomaly with the trip down to the coast it came down and it stabilized at seven kilometers to the litre and the sunfoil was fitted two months 
before it was wired up electrically and it came up to almost nine kilometers to the litre before I had to take it off for 10 days to work on the paint and that's how slowly it <laughs> we're talking five weeks before the fuel burn starts to pick up after the panel goes back on all right battery chemistry is a cumulative thing but this vehicle's picked up about 12 percent in overall terms in the time since the sunfoil was connected so if you've got a diesel, fit the biggest panel that you can fit on the roof without looking stupid. Because diesels eat electricity every time they start. If they've got glow plugs, that's 30 amps per plug, sometimes half a minute before cranking, and sometimes as long as three minutes after. If you've got no glow plugs, then you've got a really, really big, powerful starter motor. By the way, you're going to use a lot of electricity, particularly on the cold starts, as much as seven amp hours. So, stick a big solar panel and a regulator and feed sunlight to your battery instead of petroleum. So, fit a sun foil, do it yourself, unless you live here in the town of Glen Ennis. You're going to have to do it yourself because this is the only place I know of on planet Earth where you can come and get your car measured for a sun foil. Glen Ennis, auto electrics and air conditioning. where the tradesman drives a retrofitted hillbilly hybrid sunfoil equipped four-wheel drive just like his father. Ciao!